Come on, let's jam. Rock and roll. Listen to the music. Sounds like a good time. 93.3 KZOZ. Did you hear the news? I know you're very excited about going to the moon. Well, I think you think it's you think I, it's, I, I it's think we absolutely should go back. worth worth it. I think somebody should go back. Oh wait, I thought you said we never went in the first place. You gotta that's make up why, your mind. That's how I prove that <laughs> we didn't go. If we go and we fail miserably, I'm like, uh huh. What happened in '69? Well, we got a couple things working this morning. NASA says that Nokia just gave them 14 million dollars to build a cellular network on the moon. They're going to put cell phone towers on the moon. All right, and now Elon Musk. I got to find this. Elon Musk says we're going to be there in four years. Be there doing what? We're going to be there. Well, we they're going to be there in 1969, according SpaceX to NASA. SpaceX is on track to launch its first mission to Mars as little as four years from now, which means we'll already be to the moon. He says. So uh, we're going to the moon. We're going to Mars. They're going to. They're actually talking about. Did I see this here? Let me and go then back we're going to go to Jupiter, and then we're going to go to <laughs> Venus. <laughs> then we're going to go to Uranus. <laughs> Um, let's see here. This is interesting because, I mean, if you're excited about space and all that, and it's like, I feel like space hasn't really been a priority since the, you know, the shuttle missions kind of wrapped up. Like, yeah, we jump on with the Russians or the, I don't know, who else, to, who else flies up to space? China? Well, didn't the Russians, not the Chinese. Didn't the Russians do it like in three days? Uh, well, they said they were going to, but we've never heard from them. I <laughs> don't know if they made it. I feel like that's what Russian claims are all about. I guess we got vaccine. And then you hear nothing else of it. Uh, we go fly to space station in three days. And then you hear nothing about it. Um, it's a short guy. Um, so th- this is obviously uh, something that we NASA have tornadoes says. made a mosquito. With Nokia and the, uh, the, the cellular network that they're going to put on the moon. And it'll be 4G, by the way. Not quite 5G yet. Uh, 4G LTE. You know, it sucks when you get the LTE. Whoa, 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 the LTE whoa. sucks. Whoa, whoa. We have 5G. We're up in space. We're right next to the satellites. You're telling me you can't extend it? You don't know how. No, no, no. The satellites orbit the Earth, not the moon. I mean, we're going to be way far away from the. They're there. Well, they're They're, in the space. We're we're within the moon. The moon is within our our atmosphere. Yeah, no, no, no. No, it's not within our atmosphere. It's outside of our atmosphere, right? The atmosphere is what surrounds the planet. And the satellites go in our atmosphere. Right outside the atmosphere. I mean, they're just outside. Which is closer then? When it's orbiting the Earth, or is it closer to what, what is the it? moon? The satellite. Is the satellite closer to the moon or closer to the Earth? When Do it's I have to really answer this for you? I don't know. Jeff. I don't know. It's close to the Earth. We sure of that. We're sure of that. Why does the moon look so much bigger in the sky? I mean, I'm not an engineer or a scientist, but I'm telling you right now, yes. That's why we can see the satellites when they fly by us. See, the moon, it's 700,000 times bigger than the satellites. That's why you can see it. You see the reflection of the light onto the satellites are very small. Are we sure? And they, about and that? they, and that's how they get our service. It's, we're not, they're going to put satellites around the moon and that's what's going to happen. And they're going to feed off each other and so on. So cell service on the moon. There's no timeline yet, but the uh, move is meant to support NASA's plan to install a lunar base by 2028. Come on, dude. Come on, dude. Imagine that's if, eight years. Imagine if they would have started a working, lunar base. Imagine if they would have wor- started working on that and say 1969, where we'd be by now. Well, they had some complications. What were the complicated? The challenge? Solar flares. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you can't even sell me that the Challenger was a col- co- uh, a complication because that didn't happen until the mid 80s. Okay. What are you going to say when they bring back the flag and some of the rover units that were on the moon from the original lunar landing? You're gonna say, I guess I was wrong. If somebody brought guess back, I a, was wrong. Somebody brought we back did a land. flag. I would have to get it authenticated by the proper parties and ones that I trust. I don't know that I trust NASA because they went in '69 and then they left it to Elon Musk to develop in 2028. You What's know? the weather? I mean, like, and I don't know enough about the space. About space, not the space. That's not you know like what the internet. It's not no like when Neil Armstrong stepped on the moon. He said, "You know what." I bet you in 70 years we're going to build the lunar base here. I think he had higher expectations. Yeah, I'm sure he thought by the 80s, at least. <laughs> yes, right? yeah. But MTV happened and everybody got distracted. 
I don't know. Blame it on Zuckerberg. So here we go. NASA says they're going to have a base up there by the twenty by twenty twenty eight, and within the next four years, they're going to have. They're teaming up. Nokia gave them this money, fourteen million, and uh, they're going to have a cellular network up there. If Neil so Armstrong, then, if Neil Armstrong did indeed set foot on the moon, if he did, then he'll be very happy that his legacy will live on many many years after his death. Right. Who are we calling, by the way? His legacy will begin many, many years after his death. So they'll put the lunar base up there. It'll have cell service. And I guess if you're working up there on the moon and you need to get a hold of, you know, the wife and kids to see what's for dinner (laughs) or when you'll be home in the month. I mean, I don't know how long it takes. Then you'll be able to do that. But how about that wrong? Was it Neil Armstrong? Who was the first one to walk on the moon? Was it Neil? Neil. Okay. Yeah. That's making sure. And the satellites. Or to allegedly walk on the moon. You know, they, the satellites. It's the Earth, not the moon. It's in our atmosphere. Well, I don't know. If you stop and think about that for a second, you realize what you said. But I think SpaceX is a big reason well, why NASA has been pushed. Which is close. Without SpaceX, I don't think you have this com- this competitive edge or this competitive push yep. to get what, things that's done. What it was government job, government entity. NASA was a government entity, and when it was a government entity, they're like, we went to the moon. We're not going to have to, or we tricked everybody into thinking we went to the moon, whatever side of the coin you, you fall on. They, they sit the back, they kick their feet up on the desk, and they go, they go, <laughs> we're not going to have to work until 2020. Let's sit back and enjoy the paychecks. By we the way, tax dollars, baby. The SpaceX program will just be a unmanned rocket in four years that will be going to Mars. It will, there will not be astronauts on there. What about the moon? People think What's we're going there. The moon, the moon I be, we're going soon. We're supposed to be going in a couple of years with a woman. The first woman's going to go to the moon like in 2024, I think. Oh, that's progress. I don't know if you saw any of this on the news, Jeff. I saw it uh, yesterday, and uh, we actually have uh, a couple people from King David's Lodge on to talk about it. They're trying to collect some laptops for families, for people that could, that need them. And uh, to start off, we have uh, Master Andrew Brown joining us. Uh, Master Andrew Brown, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Uh, I'm good. doing very, very well. We don't uh, do we do we like play some kind of fanfare to uh, announce we were talking to the master. I mean, is that how does it work? No, nothing like that. Okay. I'm just basically the uh, the I, leader of the Masonic Lodge for the coming year. Okay. Oh, uh, because I, I is this a voted in position? It is. Yeah, okay. I'm an elected officer. Hmm. See, I had it ready. I'm sorry. There I was, you go. Perfect. So, right. <laughs> so you are okay. So do people call you master? Uh, the. I guess the official term is uh, worshipful, so they call me Worshipful Brown. But oh, okay. That's just the term we use. It's just something you don't hear that much anymore. A very old school throwback. Will you tell us a little about King David's Lodge and and what you guys are all about? Yeah, so we're a fraternal organization. We're part of California Freemasonry, uh, which has been around in the state for uh, I can't remember exactly how long, but over 150 years. Because our lodge here in San Luis Obispo is 150 years old. Uh, we just celebrated that this year. Um, we have a building downtown. Beautiful building. <laughs> Where is the building, yeah, by the way? Building. It's, oh, it's no, no, above, I've been there. It's, it's above uh, Central Coast Airport. Okay, wait a second. It's I've beautiful. been there for the... Um, Gorgeous. The, what, we, what were you there for? We were there for the uh, the awards, the uh, I movies. Was not, I was not there. The movies. What's that called? The film festival. Oh, yeah. The film, the film and, festival. And, oh, my God, this is a beautiful building. Yeah. But listen, Master Quite possibly David. the prettiest building. In I missed Master Andrew. Listen, I walked into a door I wasn't supposed to, and I was in some kind of chamber, and there was all these seats uh, along the wall. And what is that room? What was along the wall? I was upstairs, I walked in this room, nobody was in there, and there was all these seats, almost like a jury would sit in there, and there was a head thing at the front, it was all this beautiful woodwork, but it, it was, um, it, I don't know, it was all these seats along the wall, this big so, room, like a ballroom. A huge, huge lodge room, yeah, so yes. that's our lodge room, and so um, that's where we hold our, all of our meetings, and so there's a few uh, larger chairs there that the officers sit in, and then all the members sit in those, uh, those seats along the wall. It so. looked like something right out of the movies, Jeff. 
It was pretty spectacular. But anyways, okay, so you guys are all about, obviously, the community, and you guys are doing a laptop drive. And I, I should probably bring in Christine, right? Christine Robertson. Uh, good morning, Christine. Thanks for joining us. Yes, good morning. We've got Master Andrew Brown uh, on the phone with us. Tell us a little bit about this uh, donation laptop drive you guys are doing. So Christine is the executive director of the San Luis uh, Coastal Education Foundation, Mm -hmm. uh, whom uh, King David's Lodge has partnered with for this laptop drive. Uh, And so one of the primary missions of California Masonry, especially our lodge here in San Luis Obispo, has been the advancement of education. And so with COVID going on and all that distance learning, uh, we realized that there was this need for um, computational devices for the students, and so we put together this laptop drive and joined forces with the, uh, the Education Foundation to help get those uh, computers into the hands of students. Now, there's some specifications in which uh, these used laptops are being accepted so they can be passed on to high school students. Um, go through some of those specs for us. Yeah, so the... Uh, the computers need to be Windows 10 uh, compatible, so if they don't have Windows 10 currently loaded, they need to be able to accept Windows 10. And then uh, we prefer to have uh, a computer that had 8 gigabytes of RAM in it, and then it also needs to be Wi-Fi compatible. Those are pretty much the minimum requirements. And if we do receive computers uh, such as Chromebooks or Apple computers that, are, that don't meet those specifications, We've actually also partnered with Stand Strong, and we'll be donating those uh, devices to Stand Strong uh, to use with their clients. Oh, how awesome is that? Christine, now, you're with the San Luis Coastal Education Foundation, so you guys are going to receive these laptops, and how do you decide who gets them and how you're going to distribute them? Yeah, we're going to be working with each of the school sites who have teachers that are identifying students that have needs. And what we're finding at the high schools is, Although most of our students have uh, school-issued Chromebooks, as Andrew mentioned, some of those devices just don't have the required computing power to run some of the more sophisticated applications that students are using in some of their uh, career technical education classes. So, for example, if they're doing a, a sort of a CAD program where they're doing you know, 3D design online, they need a little bit more of a robust device than the Chromebook. And so where we find those students that don't have access to that type of technology in the home, we're going to be making sure that these devices get out to those students. So we're working with the sites, with the teachers, and then any students that self-identify. Now, there are three places where you can drop the, uh, these uh, laptops off at. Uh, Central Coast Surfboards, right underneath the uh, Freemasons uh, building there. Uh, at Cafe Roma uh, at the Railroad Center uh, in, in San Luis Obispo. And uh, at Sunshine Health Foods in Morro Bay uh, are the three. That, that's located at 415 Morro Bay um, Boulevard. If you're uh, living out in Morro Bay and you have access to a laptop that you don't use anymore and it meets these specifications, I mean, you could be really, I, I always say a, a, a commitment and a donation to youth is a commitment and a donation to society and your community because uh, you're helping the foundation of your community. You guys are all about foundations being Freemasons, right? Exactly. And another thing I want to add on to those uh, drop-off locations is we're, we also have a, a phone number and an email address where you can contact us, and we'll actually come pick up the laptops if you, for one reason or another, can't make it to those um, three locations. So you can visit us at slowmasons.com or on Facebook, King David's Masonic Lodge, and uh, find find those uh, contact information. Very nice. Appreciate your time, guys. Master Andrew Brown and Executive Director Christine Robertson with the uh, San Luis Coastal Education Foundation. Appreciate you guys doing this, and, and we're glad we could get the word out. All right. Thanks, Great. thanks so much. I um, just took a look at this, and the new survey uh, found that two out of 2,000 parents, they found that the average respondent believes that their child will surpass their own technical skills by the age of blank. What do you think it is? 12. 10. Oh, my God. I thought 12 was aggressive. And that's because virtual school, like what they're talking about, where these kids are. I mean, when she was talking about kids, and she brought up the program, and she needs, they said they need beefier laptops than the Chromebooks that are being provided to them, and she said 3D something. I've never heard of that before. <laughs> and to know that there are kids doing it right now in high school, you're like, oh, God. 
Would they're you gonna, remember being a little gonna kid? Surpa- they're going to surpass us. Like your daughter's seven, right? I mean, she's got a tablet. She's she's way into yeah. this kind of stuff. I just remember being she's about crazy. seven, eight, nine years old, somewhere in there, and trying to get my mom to play a video game with me, and she just got. Yeah. She's like, "No, nah, I can't do it." She just couldn't grasp the concept, the concept of even doing it. Somebody who was born in the fifth, in the mid fifties. Eighty-five percent of parents say they are impressed at how quickly their child picks up new technology. My daughter wants. Uh, a certain toy for Christmas. I'm trying to think. Is she listening? No, no, she's not. Okay. Uh, she wants a Nintendo Switch. And, um, oh, that's right. I looked up one of these. Somebody else was talking about it. It's like I a handheld had, game unit. I had to look into it, and I'm looking into it, and I think I understand video games okay. It's a handheld, but then again, it, you can hook it up to the TV, and that's where it gets confusing to me because it's got a dock that it sits into. When you put it in the dock, then you can play it on the TV, and you can play it on the TV, you can take the controllers off of it, and then you can do it. How does it hook into the TV, HDMI? Because the dock. You stick it in this little dock. No, I understand you, that, but then the dock has to connect I'm to the TV. I'm guessing, yes. Or that, Bluetooth that, or Wi-Fi? It, or? I don't know. Then that, no. that's where I'm like, which one do we buy? Or it casts? <laughs> can you cast up to your TV? I don't know. So they have two <laughs> versions of it. What do you mean? You've never casted something to yes, your phone? Yes, I do. I just don't know how the, the, oh, the, no, okay. the switch does. Well, that's just important to know that if it'll at least right. cast. But there's two versions of it, okay? There's one that they're selling for two ninety nine right now, okay. and then there's one that they're selling for three ninety nine. The three ninety nine one is the standard red and blue Nintendo Switch. But that's you're talking about $100 here. $100 is nothing to scoff at. The other one is branded by one of the games, meaning like it's serves as advertising for one of the games, and it's like um, woodland creatures or something like that. It's not a Switch? It is a Switch. It is a Switch. Okay. But it's just, it's just Nintendo allowed woodlands, woodland creatures to be on all these, on all the components of it. And it doesn't come with the woodland creatures game. You have to buy that separately. But the woodland creatures are there. So they, their hope is the people that manufacture the woodland creatures game, their hope is... The kids will always see it because they'll always be playing with the the components, and they'll be like, "We need to get the one. We need to get that game. game. It's almost a guarantee that somebody's going to get that so game. So it's like, but it's like it, the it cost, knocks off a hundred dollars. The cost, the cost of the switch is underwritten. So both of these units the are exactly the same, except for the fact that the cheaper one was co-sponsored has, by this Woodland Creatures game. Has the animals? So on. it's cheaper because the, they okay. And yeah. I get it. That makes sense. I That's think, actually a pretty good idea. I think, but I'm not sure. So I had to call another parent that already bought their kids the Switch, and they're not sure because the only Switch they know is the Switch that they've got, and they're like, I don't know. I got this one. It seems to work good. I would go ahead and go with that one. I don't know about this woodland creatures thing. And I'm like, well, everything online says that it matches the same thing. So you have this network of parents who are clueless when all we have to do is ask the kids, but we can't ask the kids because if we ask the kids, then they'll know what they're getting for Christmas. So what the hell do you do? Ask an older kid. That's what we tried to do, and they got technical. The nephews? Maybe you ask our intern, Cameron. He's not a kid, but he's the closest to a kid that we know. He'll be joining us after 8 o'clock this morning. Well, he doesn't want to wake up. <laughs> he's at class. <laughs> he's in class, man. I don't know. He said he's he, not he, he wasn't available no classes on going Tuesdays on until after 8. 6.45 in the morning? Come on. <laughs> class have you ever been to at 6.45 in the morning? So ask him coming up at 8 o'clock. See what he says. Maybe he knows anything, something about the Switch. I don't know anything about any of this stuff. Number one, because it's video games. And number two, I'm 44 years old right. and I don't have any kids. I know. But by the way, um, 78% of uh, parents believe it's important for children to be introduced to technology at a young age. So if you have a lot. But at a certain point, isn't it very important for you, the parent, to be up on this technology until they turn a certain age because they're young and vulnerable to, you know, the jerks out there in, in, in the Internet and, in, in, you know, as far as what's going on? I mean, I would, if I had a child, I would want to know everything that they're doing and understand everything that they know how to do and yeah. maybe some beyond, mm-hmm. which puts a lot of stress on you. Until maybe they're at least 16. Well, that's why parents, I mean, you should probably just learn the parental locks, and that's it. I mean, everything has a parental lock. I know. Learn that. Everything you get now. Learn uh, that. Learn the parental locks, and then and then you're golden. By the way, if you have one of those laptops, don't forget, um, you can call uh, Greg at 805-434-8105, and he'll come and pick up your laptop, or you could drop it off at Central Coast Surfboards, Cafe Roma, or Sunshine Health Foods out in Morro Bay.
Subscribe to the Jeff and Jeremy podcast now on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, and YouTube. It's your Central Coast commute-friendly podcast.